Halo. Halo, Sabu Manisa. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, sir. 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 It was fine, sir. Thank you, sir. Good morning, sir. Money. Hello. So good morning. I'm going to start from where I stop. This is a, a continuation. We tweeted Uni 2 last week. And if I can remind you, we talk about the rate law, rate expression, and how we can do some calculations. So today we're going to continue from there. I picked one of the factors, which is concentration, and I treated it, and we ended up establishing experimental rate law by determining the order to respect to each of the reactants. Concentration and the rate law. This is what we treated last week. You know the effect of concentration right from your senior secondary school, it will say, if you increase the concentration, obviously you increase the number of molecules and that will increase the rate of reaction. But we went beyond that to be able to establish the rate law. One of the reasons for doing this uh, experiment to determine the velocity or speed of a reaction is also to determine the rate law. It's from the rate law uh, that you can actually uh, explain very clearly and correctly the effect of concentration on the rate of a reaction. And I use a particular uh, equation six, that is a hypothetical reaction. And then you establish equation seven A and seven B. And I want to tell you that everything on the left-hand side, look at that, that stands for rate. You can use capital R or small r to represent it, equal. And that become K into the concentration of each of the reactants raised to a power. So equations 7A and 7B, you can use any of them to represent the rate of reaction. I have explained that everything on the right, on the left is rate. So that the first one is the rate of decrease of A. The second one is the rate of decrease of B. So you can use any of them to represent the rate. And that will be equal to the specific rate constant, each of the reactants raised to a particular power. And it is that power you can determine experimentally. I, and so you know how to find the order with respect to each of the reactants and the overall order of the reaction. And I said, that has to be determined experimentally. So we ran through the process of determining the order of respect to each of the reactants. And I gave a particular example. So have explained all this. And I said, if you double the concentration and the rate remains the same thing, that is zero order. If you double the concentration uh, and the rate is double, that is first order. If you double the concentration and the rate increases four times, that is second order. They just a way, very simple way of predicting. What if it is not double, it is increased by 1.5? How do you solve that? So that is a question for you. And I gave a particular example. Look at that. 
the experimental rate law for the above reaction, its rate is equal to K into A and B into zero. And so the order with respect to A, look at this A, the order is one. If it is zero, you can put it. If it is one, don't need to put it, don't need to put it. If it is two, you put it. If it is fraction, you can put it. If it is zero, you can put it. So this particular equation, you can write it like this. Rate equal K into A raised to power one. You can leave B, B raised to power zero. Anything raised to power zero is equal to one. So you can write it like this, or you can write it like this. Anyone. If you write the first one, you're correct. If you write the second one, you're correct because B is raised to power zero, so it becomes one. You use one to multiply K into A, it's the same thing. So get that very clear. But when you do not see anything written there, assume that it is one. Okay, so this is the table. I just use it to explain to you how you can do the calculation. In case you didn't get this, what I did here is, this is what I did here. And this is the first rate is equal to one, and that will be equal to K. And I put the concentration into the rate equation. And I take another one, which is four. And so this is one over four, look at that. On your left hand side, that is equal to one over four. That's what you have here. On your right hand side, the K is constant because the temperature is constant. So the K goes away. This and this they are the same, so they go away. And when you come, this and this are the same, so they go away. So you are left with this. And that can be written as this. And then you can change this one to 0.3 times two. It's the same thing as 0.6. So what I did is just so write it as two. One over four is the same thing as one over two raised to power two. And this I changed, I wrote it like this, 0 0.3 raised to power n over two raised to power n times 0 0.3 raised to power n. So I was able to eliminate that. So I'm left with this, which is equal to this one and this. So you can turn them around and then you can write e two raised to power two is equal to two raised to power n. This is what you did in school those days. Two raised to power two is equal to two raised to power n. What is the value of n? That is how I got two. So I hope that is clear now. So very quickly, and I gave you some quizzes. I will just run through them. The rate of formation of, of D, this is D, D is a product. The rate of formation of D in the above re reaction is found experimentally to be independent of the constitution of B. Whenever you hear the word independent of the constitution of B, it means B is like a spectator. So it will affect, you don't need to bother yourself about B again. And to quadruple, when the concentration of A is double, I have told you when the concentration is double and the rate increased four times, it is second order with respect to A. So write the rate law because it is independent of B. B is a spectator. Don't bother yourself about B. So write the rate law. You just write capital R or you can write R A T E is equal to K. K must be there into A, A must be there because when you double A, the rate increase four times. Therefore, it's the second order. That is the rate law. If you decide to write B, if you put B there, you raise B to power zero and then it goes away. So it's irrelevant. That is how to write the rate law, okay? Okay, look at that. I'm running through this so that I can understand the better. I've treated all this. For the general rate law, rate is equal to K into A 
b raised to the power two. If I ask you, what is the total order? What is the total order of this reaction? You know that A is raised to the power one, B is raised to the power two. So the overall order is three. That is how to get the answer to the overall order. What is the order with respect to B is two. What is the order with respect to A is one. So the overall order is three. You say, what will happen to the rate of reaction if the concentration of A is triple? And then I told you, this is how you can see very clearly. In schools, where you are coming from, they taught you that if you increase the number of molecules, you increase the rate of reaction. But look at, you now know how to write the rate law. From the rate law, how can you use that to explain the effect of concentration? Look at what it can give to you. What I have there, if I say rate, is equal to K, A is one. One raised to power one is one, B is one. B raised to power two is one. And so what do you have? Rate is equal to just one K. And then look at that. What will happen if the rate of, if the rate of reaction, if what will happen to the rate of reaction if the concentration of A is triple? Then you go there and triple the concentration of A. If you put where you have A now, if you put three there, what will happen? Rate becomes three and B will remain as one. So it becomes three K. Which one is higher? One K or three K? I, I mean, K is specifically concise. It's not like your thousands that you talk about, okay? You see that when you triple that, when you, you triple the concentration of A, the rate has increased. So this is how to use the rate law to explain the effect of concentration. And the first time, it was just K. The second time, by the time you triple the concentration of A, the rate has increased to the 3K. So if I give you the value of K, then you can multiply. And you see, if K is two, you find out that it is six. And the first one is two. Automatically, what would be the answer? The rate will be triple. That is how you got C as your answer. Okay. Now let me just let me take another one. What is the overall order for the reaction represented by the rate law? So this is a rate law. This one is a rate law for a reaction. What is the order of respect to hydrogen? One. What is the order of respect to nitrogen two oxide or uh, nitric uh, nitric oxide is two. The overall order of the reaction one plus two that is three. So you just pick this one D third. Very simple. Okay. So today let's go on to unit three. I uploaded unit four last night. You must have seen it, and if you haven't seen it, well after the lecture you can download it and look at that. So we're going to look at, very quickly, look at molecularity of a reaction. Again, I will go back to mechanism of a reaction. Then I will look at predicted rate law. I'll be talking of experimental rate law. Then you can predict the rate law, okay? And from all the steps that are involved in the reaction, you can predict the rate law. And then you can find the unit of the specific rate constant. So we are going to talk of molecularity, mechanism. Mechanism again, you remember that at the beginning, I told you that I told you that this topic deals with the rate of reaction, which is the time rate of change of concentration, and the factors that affect the rate of reaction, again, and mechanism. So just three things I'm combining. The time rate of change of concentration, what are the factors? We've been dealing with concentration all along, and we are still dealing with that factor concentration. Then we will look at the mechanism, and then we'll look at how you can predict the rate law theoretically, and then we we'll look at the unit or specific rate constant. Those are the things that okay, expected outcome. At the end of this topic, you should be able to derive the unit of unit that specific rate constant has, whether it is first order, zero order, or second order, or any other, that is where we are working. We are, so we are working towards the answer.
You should be able to predict. You should be able to predict uh, the molecularity of area when you know all the steps. So we are working towards the answer. The, if you look at that hydrogen reacting with oxygen, that will give you H2O. And the reaction is, is balanced. That is a balanced chemical reaction. Okay, but it's not a simple way that hydrogen will react with nitrogen to give ammonia or hydrogen will react with oxygen to give H2O. It's not a straightforward reaction. There are steps that are involved. How did you get into the University of Ibadan? You went through GSS, SS, whatever, then you wrote JAMP and you wrote WIAC and all that. You were able to get into the, uh, the university here. All those steps, they are mechanism. And so chemical reactions are not straightforward. And some of them are made up of so many steps, what you call multi steps. And so it is very important to carry out experiment to determine the effect of each of the reactants on the rate of reaction. So each step, we call it elementary step or consecutive steps. They all are together. It's the totality of all these steps that will give you the overall reaction. So it's not hydrogen just reacting with oxygen to give H2O. There are steps that are involved. And then when you are trying to work out these steps, you are working out the mechanism of the reaction. You are working out the way the reaction is occurring. You are looking at the molecular events that are happening in their journey to, in their progression to the product, what is happening to the molecules, the overall reaction, how is the reaction occurring? That will give you the mechanism of the reaction. But the steps that we give the final thing, the final balanced chemical equation. And that is why we're saying the steps are very important. Look at, they represent the progress of the overall order of overall molecular event. I'm talking about the elementary steps. It is the for addition of all these steps that will give you the mechanism of the reaction. So if they ask you what is mechanism of a reaction, I have been saying this since the first day I started lecturing you, that is the way the reaction is occurring, is the summation of all the steps that are involved, is the molecular event that is happening to the reactant in their progression to the product a collection of the, of the kinetic steps that are involved. You can so explain mechanism in so many ways. I have so many of them, a collection of individual kinetic processes, all elementary steps. As you are explaining that, you are talking about the mechanism. All this explanation of how the reaction takes place or occurs is the same thing as the mechanism. The molecular event, that is very important to we as chemists, that is occurring, is the series of steps that are involved, when you sum them together, give account of them, you are looking at the mechanism of the reaction. Go to the equation below. Look at that. The nitrogen pentoxide. I can decompose this one. I can decompose this to give you nitrogen, four oxide and oxygen. So how do you give account? How did it happen? That I was able to decompose it by heating it to give you nitrogen, four oxide and oxygen. So you can give account of the stages. And when you are doing that, you are giving, you are explaining the mechanism of the reaction. See the way I did my own. Look at this. Look at what I am decomposing. Look at the reactant. How did you get this? In school those days, if they ask you carbon, Calcium carbonate can decompose to give you calcium oxide and uh, carbon dioxide. And you know, how did it happen? You can see that if I decompose this, I will get a 24 oxide and oxygen. But how did it happen? Look at the way. What I mean by one way, I mean this is my way of explaining you. If you are intelligent enough and you not have experience in this area, you can work out your mechanism. An explanation how this decomposition occur. Look at that. Equation one is a very slow steps. So there are three steps here. One, two, and three. This one is elementary steps. This one is elementary step. This one is elementary steps. So this reaction is complex. It's made up of steps. The number of molecules 
that are taking part. All these are reactants, the ones on your left before the arrow. The number of molecules that are taking part on the reactant side of elementary equation is known as the molecularity. The number of molecules, if you take this one, look at it. If you take this one, how many molecules on your right hand side? Only one. That is this, only one molecule. Take, so the molecularity of these steps is one. If you take the second, if you take the second step, this one is elementary step. How many molecules are reacting here? Forget about these two. One NO2 and one NO3. Two molecules. The molecularity of these is two. The molecularity of these is three. But if I decide to put three here, take note, take note. I put three in front of this. The molecularity of this level becomes three plus one, which is four. So molecularity here is one. Here is two. Here is two. So what is molecularity? The number of molecules taking part or species reacting, taking part on the reactant side of each elementary step. This one is elementary step. This one is elementary step. This one is elementary step. If I add all together, I will give the overall reaction. This is the overall reaction. That's what we're talking about. How do I, I said is the summation, is some the totality of these steps add together will give you the overall reaction. So that's what you see all along as you be coming from senior secondary school. Hydrogen plus oxygen, H2O. Hydrogen plus nitrogen, ammonia. Carbon plus oxygen, carbon dioxide. Like that. That's what you see, like this kind of reaction. But I can explain how this happened. And then as I'm doing that, I'm talking about the mechanism reaction. But when you add up, you must get this particular reaction. How did you get it? If I put two here, I put two here, I put two here, and I add up. And I'm going to remove anything on my right hand side. On my left hand side, I remove it. I can remove this one because it's on my left. And let me pick another color. I can remove this one. I can remove this one. Because anything on my left as well on the right hand side of this equation, remove them. Whatever is left, then you add up. Look at that. I can remove this. Two of them, this one and this one, they are the same thing. When I come here, I remove these two. So that anything after removing on the right, on the left, whatever is left becomes, this will be left. Look at that. Let me pick another color for you. This will be left. Two of these plus two of these. That is four. That is how I got this four. Oxygen is left. Look at oxygen. That is how I got this oxygen. On my left hand, this will be left because this will go away. NO2 here, we go with this. Okay. This one, it will also go like that. So they will leave the system. And this and this, and this one, two. This one is two. So this will be left, two of these. Then four of these, two of these, plus two of these, that is four, then plus oxygen. That is how I got this. What did you find out from here? The summation of the elementary step must give you the overall reaction. This is the overall reaction. And that is what mechanism is talking about. This one way is OP Egbedi's way of explaining to you how that reaction can take place. You can see that, and if you be doing work in this area, formulate your own mechanism, but you must agree with certain conditions. As we go along, you will find out what are the conditions. So that is the mechanism of reaction. And I've told you, okay, this is what I've been explaining. Most chemical reaction consists of elementary step. I have used the, the figure that I've just, the template I've just left now to explain to you. But one of the steps, one of the steps, look at that. Look at the first steps. One of the steps is very slow. In addition to the molecularity of each elementary step, the whole of this reaction can also be described by one molecularity, and that is the molecularity of the slowest step. 
So a reaction consists of so many elementary steps, some of them because they are complex. The step that is very slow, the slowest step determines the rate of a chemical reaction. And that step is referred to as the rate determining steps. It limits the reaction. You cannot be faster than your slowest point of your journey. If you are going to Lagos and then you drive into a hold of, that's what we call go slow. That will determine when you get to Lagos. If you don't overcome that hold up, you can't get to Lagos. That becomes a rate determining step. For example, did you write jump maybe twice? That means jump limited your speed. And so that step becomes a rate determining step. And how do you explain that? Reactions are made up of steps, but the slowest step is the rate determining step of that reaction. And then we can also use that molecularity of that slowest step of a reaction to qualify a reaction. And that becomes the molecularity of the overall reaction. But take note, each step has its own molecularity. I've just used this screen to explain to you. Each step has its own molecularity. But if they ask you to qualify the molecularity of a whole reaction, you can also use the molecularity of the slower step to explain that. Okay, I've just said, I said one of these, these steps, which is much slower than the other steps, determine the rate of reaction is referred to as the rate determining step. Okay, I've told you reactions are made up of elementary steps and one of the steps is very slow. This is exactly what I'm talking about. This number of molecules or species reactant taking place on the left-hand side of that elementary step is what we refer to as the molecularity. If the number of molecules involved on your A plus B is equal to C, if the numbers of, this is the number of reactants, the molecule, if I say this is an elementary step, take note, you must hear the word elementary process, elementary steps. Once you hear elementary step, if I ask you what is the molecularity of this reaction, just say A plus B, one A, one B, that is two. But if it is one molecule that is reacting, A is reacting to give C. If I ask you what is the molecularity of this reaction, it's one, just A. So elementary step in which only one molecule is participating is referred to as unimolecular. If there are two, two means B, plus C, and that will give you D. If there are two, this kind of reaction is called bimolecular. If there are three, you say term molecular. And some of you say trimolecular, okay? It depends on the author that you are reading. So it's very clear now, it is one molecule that is decomposing. If you have something like this, 2A, and that is reacting to give C, if I, if I say this elementary reaction, what is the molecularity is two. If I want to give you option, I say option A is equal to one. Option B is equal to two. Option C is equal to three. So I will count it this and this just to you know, make you think. Option C is equal to three. Let me stop there. What is the answer is option B for this particular reaction. Okay, the rate of this elementary reaction is proportional to the product of the concentration of the reactant that are in that step. In the same thing, it is what you have that you'll be spending from. And so reactions are also uh, like that. They behave like that. The rate of a reaction is proportional to the concentration. And so if I have A, A reacting with B, to give you product. And if I want to write rate, I'll say rate is proportional to the concentration of A raised to whatever you want to calculate, M, concentration of B raised to what is it you don't know, L. This is the rate of reaction. So the rate of reaction of elementary process is proportional. If I remove this proportionality constant, I put equality sign there, I put K there. 
that k is what we call the specific ray constant. So take note. And so therefore, the rate for an elementary process can be predicted from the chemical equation. If I give you any equation and I ask you to write the rate law, just look at the stoichiometric factor here. Stoichiometric factor here is one. The stoichiometric factor here is one. And if I say this is elementary reaction, don't do any experiment. Write the rate law. You just go to rate is equal to K, A raised to power one, B raised to power one. If I put three here and I put two here and I say this is A plus B and that will product. If I put three here and I put two here and I say this is an elementary process, write the rate law. Just go and write rate is equal to K into A raised to power two into B raised to power three. Once you hear elementary process, don't worry, don't do any experiment before you can write the rate law. But if I say it's a reaction and it's made up of steps, okay, write the rate law. I will give you a table. Like the one I gave you, the table I gave to you, unit two, where you have the concentration of each of the reactants. And then you monitor it, keeping one constant and monitor the changes of the one that is not constant. When you are done with that, you keep A constant and monitor B. So you must do experiment. But anytime you hear elementary process, there is a progress here. The stoichiometric factor, they will coincide. So there is a coincidence between the stoichiometric factor and the order. So the stoichiometric factor becomes the order when such a process is elementary process. If I do not qualify it as elementary process, ask for the table, ask for the change in concentration so that you can calculate the order with respect to each of the reactants. Okay, now let's consider this. Consider the reaction. That's phosphorus uh, petachloride. The composite will give you this and the and chlorine. How do you write the mechanism of this reaction? If I ask you, what are you going to do? Now let's look at look at the steps. Step one, I put it there. It's a very slow step. step. What am I doing? I'm what very slow process. This is slow. And then as soon as this is formed, a very fast reaction step two. And then this, it has two steps. And I told you add up. If you add up, then you get the overall reaction. And that is, that we go, that we go. What is remaining on your left hand side? PCF5. What is remaining on your right hand side? PCF3 plus this is a radical, those the two atoms will come together to give you this molecule. So this is how the overall reaction, even when you predict your mechanism, must balance what we come out as the overall reaction. And then write experimentally, they determine, they decided to carry this experiment out. Experimentally, they determine the order with respect to PCF5. And look at what they got. Rate is equal to K. They find out that the order with respect to PCL5 is one. This is experimentally. Look at that experimentally. Okay, sit down and work it out theoretically. So what from the steps you can work it out. What will happen? You use, please, this is rate is equal. There's equality sign here. Okay. You can work it out theoretically. What do you do? You use the slowest steps of a reaction. This is the slowest step to predict it. So you go to the slowest step and write K rate is equal to K into P C F five raised to a particular power. What is the power? You see it here. It's just the number of molecules in front of P C F five. So you use the slowest step to predict Take the slowest steps as if is the elementary process and use it to predict. Just raise it to the number of molecules in front of you know, the reactant 
of the slowest step. That is how they got that. They did the experiment. They got the same thing. They got the order experimentally is one, and theoretically two, by predicting the, um, the rate law. They also got it to be the same thing. Okay, so I told you, what, what is the use of this elementary step? The elementary step must satisfy two requirements. The sum of the elementary step must give the overall balance equation for the. This is what I have been doing. Remove what is on your right, remove what is on your left. And what is left is the balanced chemical equation. And again, you can the ray determines step, which is the slowest step in the sequence of steps leading to the product formation. Should predict the same rate law as is determined experimentally. So no matter how you try to do it, when you see that you've done your experiment, then you start thinking how what the mechanism will do or should be. If it doesn't coincide with your experimental order, then the rate law will not be the same. So what do you do? You go back again and start thinking, is what will be the mechanism? Or did that mean the experiment? In other words, the experiment and the theoretical prediction of the rate equation should also be the same. Okay, let's go to this. The order of multi-step reaction must be obtained experimentally. I'm emphasizing it. Must be obtained experimentally. Let me repeat it because you come across so many questions asking you. You can predict the rate law if I say this process is elementary, but you cannot predict the rate law if I say the process is not elementary. It means it is made up of steps. And there's more two steps, more than one step. So how do you do? If this one is made up of one step, then I cannot predict the rate law and start writing, for example, the conversion of A reactive with C. And I just say rate is equal to K into A raised to power one into C. What is the front of C is one. Unless if I say it's elementary process, this conversion, then this is correct. But if I do not say it's elementary process, then I need to do experiment to find out what is the effect of A, how does the initial rate, uh, concentration of A affect the formation of D? Then how does the uh, initial rate of C or the concentration of C affect the formation of D? So I need to find out what is the effect of each of them in the formation of D before I can write the rate law. But if it is an elementary process, you can go ahead. But finally, this is my mechanism of that reaction. A is going to form B. Look at that. A can form B. A will react to form B. It's a very slow. This is rate determined step. As soon as B is formed, very quickly, B reacts with C to form D very fast. And then you can add up. Each of them is elementary step. The molecularity of the first step, 1A, is 1. The molecularity of the second step is 2B plus C. So this is how you get, you can use the rate determined step to also predict the rate of reaction, if I ask you. And that is just what I've just done here now. I say rate is equal to K into A. I didn't put C, okay? And then what will be the value of A if I say that is elementary process? The value, the order becomes one. Okay, this is another one. Consider a, hyp a hypothetical reaction. Look at the hypothetical reaction. 2C, just follow how I'm explaining it now. 2C. 2C will react with D to give E plus F. Then what happened? I'm going to work out the mechanism of this reaction and write the rate law. 2C, you have, we combine to give you C2. This is fast, this is the fast reaction. This is fast reaction, okay? And then as soon as C2 is formed, very quickly, oh, sorry. As soon as C2 is formed, it reacts with D to give you F plus E. So this is a slow reaction. So predict, predict 
the order of that reaction. I say you should use the slowest step to do it. And then you say rate is equal to rate is equal to K. What are the reactions? C2, the other one is what? D. That is the rate of reaction. If you want to use the slow step. But what is C2? C2 is just uh, um, a side reaction. We don't actually need it. And so if you want to write the rate law for this reaction, this is what you should do. Look at that. For the forward reaction, For the forward reaction, you have a situation in which rate one, K into C raised to power two. Look at the first equation. C is reacting to give C2. You have two molecules of C reacting to give C2. What is the reactant for the first reaction? It's two C2, oh, sorry, it's two C. C is reacting to give a C2. That C2 becomes like a diamond, okay? For the forward reaction, you have K1. And then if you want to go back, the first one is an equilibrium reaction. If you want to go back, what we react to go back to now give C is C2. So for the forward reaction, C is reacting to give C2. For the backward reaction, C2 is reacting to give C. So for the forward reaction, you can write step one, rate K1 into C raised to power two because the molecularity here is two. This is what I'm referring to. Look at the two here. You raise it to that. Now let's go to the backward reaction. It's coming back. When it's coming back, the reactant is C2. It reacts and it goes back because it's an equilibrium. And what is reacting is the C2. The K for that reaction is the K2. And I told you it's an equilibrium reaction. So the two of them, the first and the second one, they are equal. So you equate them and say K1 into C raised to power two is equal to K2 into C2. So they are equal. They make this as the subject of the equation. We want to eliminate it. It's a site, it's, it's an intermediate species. So you remove it. If you make this as the subject, then you have this coming out. Then you take this and go and substitute this into the equation, the rate equation, you are using the slowest step. What are the, you're using the slowest step to predict it? And that slowest step is made up of C2 and D. But we don't need this C2. We don't need this, but you have the right expression for it. You say you bring it and substitute that expression for it. If you make it, then this becomes the rate of reaction. So from the equilibrium reaction, you work out what is uh, C2. What is uh, equal to C, and then you substitute a C to rather, then you stop, you, you now substitute it in place of this, and you get this kind of expression. That becomes the rate of that particular reaction. Okay, what are the units? Look at the rate. Rate. Rate is equal to K into A. Let me just take first order. Let me just take first order. It's raised to power one. And that's fair. This rate is like the way you travel. How many kilometers do you cover in one hour? 200 kilometers per hour or 100 kilometers per hour. So rate is the same thing as mole per DMQ. I told you that concentration in chemistry becomes your distance. And then what it is rate, which is same thing as your velocity. Then per what? Per time. What is your time? Let's take maybe a second. So this rate, the unit of this side of your rate law is more per DMQ per time. What is your time? Hours, weeks. So you put rate per DMQ per time. If your time is second, say per second. And then when you come here, I told you anytime you see this sign, it is smaller or more per DMQ. So what will be inside this place? More per DMQ. What will be here? More per DNQ per unit time. So what is what is the or what are the units for this K? That is what we are looking for here. And so we're going to determine 
the units are worked out from the units of the individual terms in the concentration or uh, the individual terms in the rate equation. So you make that K, R is equal to K into A raised to power anything. Make this one as the subject of the equation and then substitute the more per dn cube per second and more per dn cube. And then you will get the units of specific rate constant. Look at that. I'm going to take a particular reaction. And that is, look at that, B, very quickly, B, and that is, give you C. And then write for the rate of decrease of B. I have taught you this before at the beginning. You say minus because B is a reactant into the A over the T, and that will be equal to K raised to power. Let's say it is first order. And that's what I've just done now. So B is the composite to give you uh, C, and the order, for example, is first order. That is how I was able to write this equation. This one is the rate of decrease of B. This one is the specific rate constant, and this one is the concentration. So you put here the whole of this, the whole of this substitute is the same thing as rate. So put the unit here, more per DMQ per time. Come here, K into more per DMQ. But then you now begin to cancel what is not supposed to be there. That's exactly what I did. If you do like that for first order, look at what I'm going to do. First order rate, I will say more. More per DMQ. Okay. Over time. That is what I mean. Look at that. More per DMQ. This is what I've just forget about the negative sign. And that will be equal to K. Then what will you put here? More per DM cube. That is what is inside that B. So remove more per DM cube. This will go away. And that will go away. What is the unit of K per second? You raise this time up. If it is hour, you say per hour. If it is time, you say per time. So the unit of K is the inverse of time. That is how to work out the unit. Let's say more per DMQ is the same thing as capital M. So let's say this is a second order reaction. Second order respect to B, you now put, you put two here, raise B to, let's say it is second order. And I ask you to work out the unit of K, you come here and put more per DMQ over time. Let's say time is second, it's equal to K. So when you come here, you write more per DMQ. You repeat, you repeat it again, more per DMQ. So one more per DMQ will cancel this one more per DMQ. So you have more per DMQ here. Then you make this as the subject of the equation, and then you're able to manipulate the more per DMQ. Remember, mole, when you move it up, it becomes per mole. When you move per DMQ up, it becomes DMQ. When you move time up, it becomes per second. That's how to work out the unit for that. Okay, I have just explained to you. So you can use more per DNQ, you can use capital M when you are working it out. So let's go to the quizzes for today, whether you can, you can answer that. The rate of formation of D, I don't know whether I've treated this. The rate of formation of this, in the above area is found experimentally to be dependent on the constitution of B. So I think I have done this. So let's just, I have done all this, I've answered them. And then methanol can be produced by the following reaction. Carbon monoxide reacting with hydrogen to give ethanol. How, how is the rate of disappearance of hydrogen related to the rate of appearance of methanol? This is the first class that I taught you. If you want to write for the rate, rate, the rate of disappearance, rate, I told you to put minus sign in front of the carbon monoxide. So you say CO over what? The T equal, look at that, hydrogen is also a reactant, minus D into what do you do before that? You use one, two to divide. I've taught you that. Why are you using two to divide? because two is the molar coefficient. 
Then you write hydrogen two over, okay, sorry, DT. Okay, and that will be equal. You continue. Then this meter now, this one is the product. How is the rate of disappearance of, this is the rate of disappearance of hydrogen related to the rate of appearance of methanol. So you continue equal, there's no space there, say equal. Then methanol, you put plus there because it's a product. Then you write D, there is no molecules, it's all just only one molecule. You put DH3OH over the T. This one, what I need from you, is this and this. How is the rate of disappearance of hydrogen? This is the rate of disappearance of hydrogen related to the rate of appearance of methanol. It is this and this that I need. Remember, there must be a negative sign in front of the hydrogen. You divide it by one over two. There must be a positive sign. If you like, you can remove the positive in front of methanol. It's assumed that it is positive. Okay, this is another one. I have done this for you. And if you want to know more about this, there's a book that, will, you know, we referred you to this particular book. Most of the things I'm talking about, they are in there. And then you can read up. If you go to the university bookshop, you can see a book, Fundamental Physical Chemistry, edited by the following authors. Then you need four. What is the order? Very quickly, I'll just say one or two things. Maybe this is a topic for another... Uh, meeting again, kinetic equations, concentration time equation. I uploaded this last night. If you have not looked at it, please do. What is, you now know the order. The order is the exponent, is the power to which you raise the, the, the reactant, okay? So what is kinetic equation? Or you can call it kinetic equation, you can call it integrated uh, equation. The, the rate law that we've already established in the next one or two minutes, the rate law that we've already established is a differential rate law. It helps you to explain rate. Look at that, rate is equal to K into A. This one is what we call, it's a differential rate law. So what do we do with it? It just is experimental relationship between the rate of the reaction and the concentration of the reactant raised to the appropriate power. Okay, it gives me an idea of how concentration does affect the rate of a chemical reaction. But it can't help me so much. Therefore, I need to modify this equation. How do I need an equation that can predict concentration at any time? So I need a relationship between concentration and time. What do I do to this equation, differential equation? So I need to integrate it. And so what it gives to me is what we call the integrated rate law. Orders of reaction, the order of a reaction can be zero, can be one, can be two, can be three, can be a fraction like one and a half, can be something, you know. So we classify all these into various order because we use the same mathematical procedure to treat each order. So what do we do? That rate law, which is a differential rate law, I am going to integrate it. And anything I'm going to, if I take zero order, I integrate it, what I have is, zero order or kinetic equation. If it is first order, when I integrate the rate law for the first order, what first order, what I have is kinetic equation for first order uh, reaction or integrated rate law. So that is what we're going to use simple calculus. And that is simple calculus is what we call the integration that we're going to work on, on the rate law in order to get uh, our uh, kinetic equation. Look at that. What is expected from you in this unit? You will derive kinetic equation for first order, second order. Okay, you know what is order before, already. Okay, and then explain the meaning of half life of a reaction. And then you will go to do some calculations using the kinetic equation. I've told you reactions can be classified into zero order, first order, second order, we'll be using first order and uh, maybe second order. And the third order, third order is not very common. 
It's not easy to get three people to agree. So we also come across that in chemistry. For three people to just come together, for you to get three molecules actually reacting like that, it's, it's not very common. That's why I put really. Then you have fractional order. It can be like one over two. It can be three over four. Then you also have negative order. So it can be something like minus one. If you are dealing with poisons, if you are dealing with inhibitors, a poison that you put into a system, instead of increasing the rate of reaction, it decreases the rate. So it becomes a poison to the system and it disturbs that particular system. So you can have negative orders. We are going to run through some of these orders and transform the, the rate law, the rate equation into kinetic equation that relate concentration on time. So anytime, if daddy gives you 100 Naira and I study you to be first order, the way you spend your money, at any time you give to me, I will be able to tell you how much is remaining. So that is the kind of equation that we're going to establish that we can predict you know, the concentration that is remaining at any time for any particular reaction. That is, yeah. So thank you very much. Keep chatting. Tell us what are the challenges you are facing. Tell us, you know, go to the chat platform and let us know so that we can, we can also answer you. And by the next class, by the grace of God, I'll give you opportunity to I'll be asking questions if there's time. Have a great day.